For the second game in a row, Terry Rozier torching the Bucks, 23 points, 8 assists last night. And as you just heard, Eric Bledsoe said he doesn't even know who that man is. Stephen A., talk to me. Well, first of all, Eric Bledsoe's lying. He knows exactly who Terry Rozier is because Terry Rozier is giving them the business. He's busting his you-know-what right now. Yeah. And Eric Bledsoe has uh -huh. to respond to that challenge. That's first of all. Secondly, and more importantly, as impressive as Der Terry Rozier has been, and he deserves a lot of credit because he's letting you know, yeah, I'm a backup, but I'm somebody that belongs on the court, whether Kyrie Irving is here or not, because I can ball too. Make no mistake about it. The star of this series has been my man Jalen Brown. This is a guy that has looked me in the face on several occasions, Max, and has said to me, Stephen A., we are coming. Keep sleeping on us if you want to. I'm telling you right now, I don't give a damn who it's against. We are no joke. Here we come. Now, obviously, this is before Gordon Haywood and ultimately Kyrie Irving went down. But Jalen Brown, before the season, in, was emphatic in his proclamations that the Boston Celtics would get to the finals, that they could potentially win it all. And he was saying that assuming they had everybody in tow. They don't, but look at what he's doing. His brother's averaging about 26, 27 this series. He is special. Make no mistake about it. But here's the thing. The Milwaukee Bucks backcourt has been outscored in the first two games of this series 96 to 25. 96 to 25. Now, Eric Bledsoe has not been impressive. Terry Rogier is out playing him. We get all of that. But Tony Snell, why is he even in the starting lineup? What purpose does this man serve? He's got two points in each of the games. He's doing absolutely nothing offensively. I know Malcolm Brogdon's on a minute's restrictions, but they got to figure out how to get him more involved. They got to do something because, listen, the Greek freak with Middleton are balling. They're doing their jobs. They are doing their jobs. They're shooting better than 60% from the field combined. They're both averaging close to 30, and then they're not getting any help whatsoever but to answer the question directly the problem is Jalen Brown even more so than Terry Rozier but Eric Bledsoe lied to the cameras when you are getting waxed like that you know exactly who that person is Eric Bledsoe should respond he's got the skills and a heart to respond I expect him to but that don't take away from the reality of what has gone on in game one and two of this series my reaction to Bledsoe's comments is that takes a lot of nerve. I mean, he's not meaning to be taken literally here, Stephen A. Of course he knows who Rogier is, but that takes a lot of nerve. I get it. Like, hey, always stay the same guy. If you're going well, you're cocky, good. If you're not going well, why would you not be cocky? When you get the business like this, let me tell you something. The reason the Bucks aren't good, and they should be good, and they're not, when they have an MVP, five-star caliber player in Antetokounmpo, and they have a four-star caliber player in Middleton. And they have, like, you know, like, when you look at that roster, I, those two are keepers. And I think Brogdon's a keeper. He's a nice little player. And, and, and I think Thon Maker is too tempting to get rid of. You just hope he develops. Everybody else you get rid of on that team. That's not, I mean, you know, and starting with Bledsoe. Bledsoe, Stephen A., when he started his career, you look at this guy and you go, boy, he has ath elite athleticism. The kind that and he already shoots well, kind of okay, and over time his offensive skills will be refined and they're already good. And his defense was really, for a little guy, you know, usually that's a defensive problem. See Isaiah Thomas, right? But Bledsoe was a defensive disruptor. He was good. He's he was a like a, a souped-up Nate Robinson gone right, you know? I mean, he was, he was really something special athletically, and you anticipate that he could be a, a, a real plus for even a championship team. He has been the opposite of that. He's a bad player right now. It's not just that he's not living up to his potential. He's a destructive force on his own team. Not a good player. Not a good player. Eric Bledsoe's a guy who should be four-star player at least. He's not even why a three. A I don't even consider force. him starting caliber right now. Why, 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 why are you saying he's a destructive force? He's not good, force. Stephen A. He's Okay. He, he's I'm just not saying you're not good, good but he you, just, he, when he you said destructive, your, no, yeah. wait, 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 wait. I'm asking, I'm asking. What when I you mean say is, the word destructive, I don't, yeah. I'm, I'm saying, I know that you're saying he's not playing well, but when you said the word destructive, I'm like, is there something else that you're alluding to? That's what I'm asking. No, no, no. What I'm saying is there are some players, I would say Jeff Green has been like this for a lot of his career, though not as athletic as Bledsoe. 
There are some players, you look at them, and they do so many things in a way that looks like they'd be effective that they can sucker a team into giving them big minutes. But because, in fact, what they do is not effective, not on a starting level, it submarines the team. It's like a player who hits home runs but doesn't, you know, on-base percentage is so low, the team is suckered into giving them a ton of at-bats, and that submarines yeah. the team. Bledsoe's one of those players right now. Hasn't always been, but he is right now. He is not a good player. He makes the Bucks worse. He has a lot of nerve talking about a guy who's given him the business like that. Drew Bledsoe or Eric? Just kidding. <laughs>